Hi, my name is Brooke Michael, and I'm one of the advisors here at the University of Michigan Flint in the School of Nursing. And today we're going to talk about some of our MSN and DMP programs. So first off, we're going to talk about why choose the University of Michigan Flint for your MSN or DMP program. We completely understand that a lot of schools have an opportunity out there for a graduate program. And so why choose ours over someone else? And the first reason is that we do have highly trained faculty that are um, available to students outside of regular classrooms hours. They understand that you probably have outside obligations above and beyond school, whether that's family or work or whatever that may be. Um, and so they try to be flexible with their hours and availability. We do have research opportunities with our faculty. So a lot of times, a lot of our students even end up publishing with our faculty. We are widely respected and recognized for the quality of our graduates. Um, and that's because you're going to come here, you're going to learn, you're going to improve your practice. This is not a diploma mill or somewhere where you can just buy your diploma. Um, they know that when you have that University of Michigan name, you were well educated. And that goes with our accreditation. So that accreditation is kind of just like that stamp of approval, that seal of approval showing that we are a high quality program and we are accredited by the CCNE. It is a University of Michigan education and degree. I know that sometimes that word Flint throws students off. It is the same diploma, same by the same regions, whether you went to Ann Arbor, Dearborn, or Flint, and you have the same alumni benefits. And again, that University of Michigan name is going to qual is going to carry with you across the United States. Um, so you know, no matter where you go for a job, they know you're going to be a well-educated nurse. It's going to put your resume up at the top above others. Um, it is an online format, so you do all of your courses online, and then we have a clinical coordinator that will help you find clinical placement in your area. And then finally, upon completion of your MSN and DMP degree, you will be eligible to set for your respective exam. And we do have an 86 to 100% test pass rate on the first attempt. So these are our different opportunities and programs. We're going to go over each of those on a different slide in detail. Um, so these are graduate nurse, uh, school of nursing programs. We have the BSN to MSN to DMP program. We have four tracks within that. And that is the adult geral acute care, the adult geral primary care, family nurse practitioner, and the psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. We also offer an MSN to DMP for those that already hold their clinical MSN and want to move on to a DMP. We also offer a dual DNP and MBA. So DMP stands for Doctorate of Nurse Practitioner, and an MBA is a Master's of Business Administration. So for those students that want to work in higher administration within a hospital or maybe want to run or own your practice, this is a great opportunity for you to get both. Um, and we also offer an MSN to DMP and executive leadership. And this is for someone that has their MSN already, but is in a non-clinical MSN. So let's talk about first um, those students that hold their BSN and want to get their MSN or DMP. So as I mentioned on the last uh, slide, there are four tracks within this program. There is adult geri acute care, adult geri primary, psychiatric and family health, um, family nurse practitioner. So a couple of things to know about the program. What the way this program works is, is every student is admitted like they're going on to their DMP, but there is an opportunity to stop out at the MSN and be done with your education, set for your nurse practitioner exam, et cetera, or continue on to the DMP. That way there's not a secondary application for you to go on to your DMP. You're already directly admitted into that um, program and you can go on and finish out your program. So the MSN curriculum is between 53 and 55 credits, depending on which track you're in. And then the DMP curriculum is only 18 credits or one more year beyond the MSN. Um, as I talked about before, students will, will receive their MSN and then they can stop their education at that point, set for your nurse practitioner exam and be done. Or you can set for your nurse practitioner exam at that point and continue on to your DMP. We do have full-time and part-time tracks available for students. So when you apply, you will pick which track you prefer to be in. And we have, as we mentioned before, online courses with minimal campus visits. So you are only coming to campus about three to five times a year. Traditionally, it's about once a semester on average. Um, and we help you find clinical placement or clinical courses in your area. Now, keep in mind that um, we have a clinical coordinator 
which is a big help to a lot of students. Most programs do not have clinical coordinator. We have two clinical coordinators that help you find clinical placement in your area. So we're going to talk about my MSN to DMP students. So as I mentioned before, this is for someone that holds a clinical MSN. So um, this is designed for the registered nurse who has a master's degree in either certified nurse practitioner, nurse midwives, clinical nurse specialist, or a certified registered nurse anesthetist. So we, um, again, it's that clinical um, MSN. Um, we have full-time and part-time tracks available. It is 28 to 31 credits for this program. Um, again, online course format with minimal campus visits. And then also students in this program have an opportunity, if you would like, to um, dual enroll in not only the MSN to DMP, but also um, add on one of our certificates in either um, Gero Acute Care Nurse Practitioner or Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner. So you could not only graduate with your DMP, but you could add into the courses that are needed for those certificates as well. And then um, you would be able to set for the prospective exam for either the acute care or the psychiatric mental health track at the end so that you could not only be, for example, if you are a family nurse practitioner with your MSN going on to the DMP, if you added one of the certificates, then you could also be a certified psychiatric mental nurse health, health practitioner, for example. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about our dual DMP and MBA option. So this is for, again, the dual DMP is Doctor of Nurse Practitioner, MBA is Master's of Business Administration. So the way this works is that you are able to apply 15 credits towards both degrees. So they overlap or um, you can use 15 credits and it goes towards both the DMP and the MBA. Um, the degrees are awarded independently of each other. So you will first graduate with your DMP and then start into your MBA coursework. Um, and then the MBA degree is awarded with a concentration in healthcare management. So the DMP and executive leadership, the DMP and executive leadership is for my um, bachelor's degree nurse, registered nurse with a master's degree in a non-clinical area. So this would be like in nursing, an MSN in nursing, nursing administration, nursing education, public health, business administration, public administration, healthcare administration, or any related administrative or nursing field. So if you have your BSN and you're a registered nurse with your BSN, and then you've got a master's in either an administrative or a healthcare field or nursing, but it's not a clinical, it's not a nurse practitioner um, type uh, clinical MSN, then this would maybe be a track or a program for you. So it is offered in an online format and the DMP and executive leadership will um, kind of help you um, with having about two times a semester online residencies with the School of Management. Um, the track is about 30 to 34 credits um, and it is completed completely online. So these are some of our sample curriculums. Um, this slideshow presentation is available to you either by the clinical clickable link on our website or if you received this webinar in an email, you should have also received a link to our slideshow presentation. And so these are all clickable, but these are all also available to you on the website. So these are the different curriculum guides. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and start sharing a screen um, to show you what one of those curriculum guides looks like so you can get an idea of how to read them. I'm not gonna go through each one. You can click those on your own on the program that you're interested in, but I wanted to give you an idea of what one looked like so that you could know how to read it. So I pulled up our BSN to MSN to DMP curriculum in our accelerated or what we call full-time track. So this is the full-time fall start track. Again, you'll see there's a fall start and a winter start in every program. There's a part-time and a full-time available in most programs. And so you'll just find that one you're looking for and you'll be able to read it. But let me give you an idea um, on how to read this one so that you can kind of get an idea how to read all of them. So um, as you can see, there is a color-coded chart at the top for the MSN DMP. There's family nurse practitioner in blue. Um, the acute care is in green. The um, 
the Jero primary is in red and the psychiatric mental health is in yellow. So as you will see on this first track, um, you'll see year one, fall semester, nine credits, and then you'll see three classes listed. There are, none of them are highlighted in any colors. So if a class is white or just not highlighted, you see that that means everyone, no matter what track you're in, in this program, would take that class. So the first semester, everybody's taking the same three classes in the full-time fall start. Then you'll start to see it starts to kind of break out a little bit in the winter of your first year. Um, everybody's taking nursing 524, 525, 601, and 700. And then if you're in the psychiatric mental health track, you would also be taking on top of all of those classes, you would be taking the yellow class. So keep in mind, again, everyone takes everything in white. And then if you see your track highlighted in that semester, you would be taking that class on top of the other classes. In the summer semester of the first year in the program, ev everyone would take um, nursing 780. You can see it's white. And then with nursing 531, the very first one, Jero and family nurse practitioner um, would be the only tracks that take women's health. So only the Jero and the family nurse practitioner tracks would take 531. The next two classes, 740 and 746, are only done by the family nurse practitioner track. Green, 860 and 861 would be done by the acute care. 800 and 803 would be done by Jero primary. And then finally, psychiatric mental health would be taking that yellow one. Again, everybody took 780, though, and then it divides out after that. So then you can kind of get an idea how that's going. And then you'll see down here where the MS in degree is confirmed. So at that point is where you can be done with your education. You have the ability to set for the nurse practitioner exam and be a certified nurse practitioner in your area. Um, you can be done with your education or here are your 15 to 18 additional credits needed to be and um, to complete that DMP. So as you can see, it's only one more year after you complete your MSN. So that's kind of one of the guides. Again, you can see all of those guides on our website and read through those. We're not going to go through each of those guides, but I just wanted to give you an example of how to read one of those guides. So um, the next thing we are going to talk about is common questions. So a lot of students want to know how long does it take for that BSN to MSN to DMP program. So for a fall start, we're going to talk about fall start. Fall is our on cycle or our main start. Winter is our off cycle. So um, if you start in the winter, it doesn't speed up your graduation, but it does lighten the load um, in a few semesters. So you'll be able to see that when you compare back to back those um, different curriculum guides, right? So when you're looking at those curriculum guides online, um, then you'll be able to see the difference between a fall start and a winter start. Um, but if you were a fall start in the BSN to MSN to DMP program, not the other tracks, just this track. Um, so for the MSN, so where you can set for the nurse practitioner exam and um, kind of stop out with your education at that point, a part-time student is two years and eight months. A full-time student is one year and eight months. For the DMP, it's only one additional year beyond the MSN. So don't think it's a total of three years and eight months, or don't think it's on top of that two years, eight months. There's another three years and eight months. No, it's total from the day you start into the B, from into the BSN to MSN to DMP program. From the day you start to the day you graduate is a total of three years and eight months for a part-time student and two years, eight months for a full-time student. So as you can see, just one more year beyond your MSN and you would have your DMP or Doctorate of Nurse Practitioner. Can I work full-time? So once you start into the graduate curriculum, that MSN and DMP curriculum, um, it definitely depends on if you're a full-time or part-time student. Um, if you're going full-time, you're going to look at those curriculum guides and behind each curriculum guide, when the course called is called practicum, that's like a clinical course, um, you'll see how many clinical hours are in that particular semester. And you will notice that um, the amount of hours that are needed in a lot of the semesters for the full-time students, there's just not enough hours in the week to do the clinicals that you need to in that semester and work full time. So it it we're not telling you you can't. Everybody's got different jobs and what is considered full time at your employment might be different than what is considered full time in another employment. We're just telling you we don't recommend working full time and going to school full time. Even working 
full-time and going to school part-time or vice versa takes up the majority of your time. You know, just keep in mind that this is a nurse practitioner program. It's very, it can be very demanding. So, um, you know, you need to know what outside obligations you have. We're not going to dictate. We're not going to tell you what you can do. It's just not recommended. How many classes do I take each semester? For a part-time student, you're going to take an average of two classes. For a full-time student, it's going to be an average of three to four. Can I take time off? Um, it is not suggested once you start the curriculum, and here is why. So this is a cohorted program, meaning the curriculum is built upon itself. You can't just skip a semester's worth of class and go to the next semester's worth of class. You must complete them in the order that they're listed. So some of these classes are only offered one time a year. So if you take time off, um, you could delay your graduation up to a year. So yes, you can take time off if you really need to, but you need to talk to your advisor um, um, and talk about which semester you're in, when are those classes going to be offered again, and kind of discuss and see, you know, sometimes life emergencies come up and there's just no option. You have to take time off. But sometimes you're like, you know, I think I need a break or something like that. Maybe you need to talk to your advisor first to see how much is going to delay your graduation. And maybe there's a different semester in which you could take time off and it wouldn't delay it as much. Will we help with clinical placement with our MSN and DMP curriculum and those clinical courses? Yes, already kind of talked about that. It's one of the advantages of that University of Michigan degree is you are, we do have clinical coordinators. Clinical coordinators going to help you find clinical placement in your area. Now, what we want to remind you of is, is that you're going to take an active role with your clinical coordinator. Um, so what we always recommend is start asking around, start asking um, people that you know that maybe could be a preceptor for you in the um, in, in your area, because here's the thing, you know your area better than we do. So you know the hospitals that are better, the people that are better to work under, people that are going to have the hours that are going to work with your life, um, things like that. Um, and maybe it's even where you would love to work. And so working there and doing clinical hours there would show future employers that, you know, you could be a great future asset to them. So um, that's what we always suggest, because it's always going to go better. But if you just can't find one, you've asked around and nobody is um, able to be a uh, preceptor for you, no worries. We will help you find clinical placement in your area. Now, your clinical coordinator is going to ask you to take an active role in this, though. They may ask you to send an email, get a paper signed, or make a phone call. So, um, you know, and there are some forms that you may need to help fill out. So just keep that in mind. Um, we definitely will find placement within two hours hours of your home. Um, it's normally much closer than that, but like if you live out of state or up in a very rural area, it could be up to two hours from your home, but they will help you find a placement in your area. Can I transfer in coursework? Yes, you can transfer in up to nine credits. Um, and that's with the BSN to DMP track, six credits in the MSN and DMP track, and nine credits in the BSN to DMP track. So yes, you can transfer in credits. It does need to be an exact equivalent. So for example, if you took, a and it needs to be a graduate level course, if you took a graduate level pediatrics course. Um, and then we don't require a graduate level pediatrics course. You can't have that transfer in and count towards pathophysiology or something like that. Same example, if you took an undergraduate, a one to 400 level, for example, pathophysiology, you can't transfer that in as a graduate level, 500 and above pathophysiology. That doesn't work either. So it would need to be a graduate, for example, these are just examples, graduate level pathophysiology from another university transferring in as a graduate level pathophysiology. So you may need to, if you've taken classes before at another institution, look at our curriculum to see if those are classes that we require. If it is, you, again, patho to patho, for example, um, it you would need to get a copy of the syllabus from your original institution. So that's your responsibility to reach out to your um, past university or college and say, hey, I need a syllabus. I need a copy of the syllabi for pathophysiology that I took. And, um, and traditionally, they keep those on hand for 10 years, so you should be good to go. And then what you would do is email that uh, syllabus to Julie West and Philip, and she'll have our faculty evaluate it for exact equivalent.
Can I complete the program out of state? Um, yes, but let's talk about that for a minute. So we have what we call, we call them no-go states. Um, and the reason that um, we can't go to these no-go states is because um, every state has different requirements as far as higher education goes. And some states want to keep those that money within their own state, right? And they can't tell you, no, you can't get a degree from another state. But what they do is they make the regulations so strict that it's almost impossible for you to get a, um, a, de a degree outside of your own state. So if you're in a state that is not Michigan, or you think you will be moving to a state during the time, please reach out to us and email uh, Julie Westenfield, where are going to go? And we'll look up to see if it's one of those states um, that like requires all of our faculty to be licensed in that state, not just one faculty or the faculty in the class. They require all of the School of Nursing graduate faculty to be um, licensed in that state. Um, and that's why we can't allow you to um, participate if you are doing your clinical course in that particular state. So there's not a whole lot of them, maybe half a dozen or so, but please reach out to Julie to make sure, because what we don't want is for you to start the program and then not be able to complete it. Um, so is my international BSN accepted? So that's a great question that we cannot answer in the School of Nursing. So the only one that can answer that question is the international department. We don't know the different accrediting bodies internationally um, and which ones are accepted into the United States as a compatible BSN to our um, United States BSN. So please reach out to our um our international department before you speak to any of us about doing our program, because we won't be of much assistance um, if you have an international BSN until our international department says, yes, that counts or no, it doesn't. So, um, oh, and if you do have an international BSN, of course, you have to be licensed in the state. So you do have to have your um, your RN license or your NCLEX passed in the state in which you are living. So let's talk about admission requirements. So first slide, top two bullet points, all programs, doesn't matter. So we talked about quite a few different programs that the university offers here in the Graduate um, School of Nursing. The first two bullet points, everybody has to have. So everyone, no matter which track or program you're doing, you need to have your current unencumbered RN license in the United States. So you need to have that NCLEX fast if you're in Michigan or if you're out of state, whatever your nursing license um, board requires. Um, so that's first, every program. Second thing is none of the programs, not one, requires the GRE. You do not need the GRE for any of our programs. So now we're going to start breaking it down by programs. So if this is not a program you're interested in, please ignore what I'm saying because I don't want you to get confused. So for my students to hold their BSN and want to do our BSN to MSN to DMP track, you need to have your BSN from an accredited college or university in the United States with an overall GPA of a 3.2 on a four point scale. Now you'll see that parentheses part where, or that kind of um, italicized part, I should say, where it says, at least one year RN experience is preferred. Now I'm gonna talk about this because this is gonna come up a lot of times and this is why. So we do not require work experience in this track and some of our other tracks, we don't require work experience, but we recommend it and here's why. What we don't want is that you just graduated with your BSN from your college or university and then you've not worked at all as a nurse before and then you go straight into an MSN to DMP program. Well, there's like we talked about, there's four different tracks. There's acute care, there's path, or I'm sorry, there's um, psychiatric, there's family, and there's Jero. And we don't want you to not have ever worked in an, as a nurse. Then decide you want to do a nurse practitioner. And let's say you start into the family nurse practitioner, then you get to working and you're like, oh my gosh, I would love to be a psychiatric mental nurse practitioner or a different track. And then you've wasted time and money on a degree that maybe you don't need. So this is why we recommend having at least one year of work experience, because we want you to make sure this is the direction that you want to go with your life, not just as far as like, I want to further my education. That's great. But let's make sure that we get into the right track so that you don't get out into the field and then realize that there's something else you would rather be doing. Um, so admissions requirements, 
for my MSN to DMP and graduate level nurse certificates. Again, um, this is that you need an MSN from a regionally accredited institution with a 3.2 on a four point scale. And you need your current unencumbered license as an advanced practice nurse. Again, this is that clinical nurse. So you need your advanced practice nurse license. And again, at least one year of work experience is preferred. So now we're going to go on to the next track. So if you are interested in the acute track for either the certificates or for my BSN to MSN to DMP, you're interested in the acute care track. We're going to talk about the requirements for acute care, only acute care. So I know I get this a lot of times because I'm going to go to this next slide and then some students are going to say, well, I don't have this much experience, but I wanted to do the psychiatric track. It's not applicable to those students. This is only if you're interested in the BSN to MSN to DMP acute care track or the acute care certificate along with your MSN and DMP. So these are the admissions requirements for that track. You do need one year full-time work experience or 2,000 hours as a registered nurse in a critical care unit. Um, we're going to list out some of the different things that we consider to be critical care units and the experiences that we would like you to have. Again, acute care track only students, this is for you. Um, if you do not see your work experience listed there, but you think it should count as acute care you can email Julie, her email's at the bottom there, explain your work experience that you've had, and she will let you know if that qualifies you for um, that one-time work experience in a critical care unit. You also need to have your ACLS and BLS certification. So you need to have um, that certification for this track only. And the other thing to keep in mind for my out-of-state students is that even if your state is, an, is not a no-go state, um, you still have to be in the state of Michigan for two of your clinical courses, 861 and 865. The clinical portion needs to be in the state of Michigan. So either you, if you're on a border state like Ohio, for example, you need to be able to do your clinicals on the Michigan side or if you're living far away, like in Oklahoma or something, you need to understand that you would have to have the ability to live in Michigan while you're doing those two clinical courses. Again, reiterating, this slide is only for the acute care track people. So anything I just mentioned off of this slide is only applicable to those. So let's talk about my admissions requirements for my executive leadership students. You again need a BSN from an accredited college or university with an overall GPA of a 3.2 on a four point scale. You do need your current unencumbered RN license in the United States and you need your master's degree to be on a 3.2 and a four point scale. We already talked about basically any area in administration or um, healthcare will work. Um, and so um, you do also need, so here's the other one, you need to have 24 months of current mid-level administrative or higher position experience. We kind of give some examples there, nurse management, supervisor, et cetera, or a faculty position teaching graduate students nursing administration or a nurse management or executive consultant position full-time in the last five years. So 24 months um, within the last five years, you need that kind of work experience. Again, if you do not see your work experience listed here, but you feel like it should qualify for you for um, a leadership or executive leadership type position, please email that to Julie and she will let you know. Um, students who have completed 30 hours of continuing education in nurse administration within the last year, you must have also done that. And um, students must demonstrate that they possess the attributes necessary to succeed in a challenging DMP level nursing curriculum and must be able to act as a professional nurse where applicable or where appropriate. So let's talk about deadlines to apply for all of our programs. So fall start deadlines. So fall programs, fall start um, we have two deadlines. We have early deadline, which is February 1st, and a final deadline, which is April 1st. So everything must be turned in by April 1st if you want to start in a fall semester. For the winter start, we have an August 15th deadline. I know it says early deadline. It should just say deadline. Um, so that's the um, last day to turn everything in to start in a winter term. Um, so let's talk about how to apply. So when you go to our website, you in flint.edu slash apply, 
you pick graduate programs from the drop down menu, there is traditionally a 55 grad um, dollar graduate application fee. But by watching this webinar today, you can fill out that form. There should be a form emailed to you or it's on our um, website. You can fill out that form and um, and then you will be able to get that $55 um, graduate application fee waived. So if you watch the web webinar, web, watch this webinar and fill out that form, you will get those $55 application fee waiver sent to you. Now it'll be sent to you within about 24 hours of filling out the form, 24 business hours, I should say, from filling out the form. Um, you will have one week to fill out the application. So make sure that when you fill out the form, after you've watched this video, that you fill out the application within a week of receiving that waiver code because it's only good for one week to waive that $55. Now, you'll have plenty of time to meet those deadlines to turn everything in, but you want to go ahead and fill out that way, um, fill out that application so you can use that waiver form within a week. Even if you're not applying or not even starting for a year from now, that's fine. Don't worry. Go ahead and fill out that application now so you can get it. Now, the other thing to keep in mind that this waiver code is only good for our University of Michigan Flint's application. It is not good for nursing CAS applications. So, if you go to nursing CAS and are filling it out, this waiver code is not going to work for that. It only works for the University of Michigan Flint's um, application. We also recommend just doing our application in general because it's going to be faster. There's less things that we require. And again, it's free. Um, so let's talk about what else you need to turn in. So everybody needs to fill out that application. You pick your program from the drop down menu, get that done from a week from getting that waiver code. But let's talk about what else you need to turn in by those deadlines. So those deadlines we talked about on the last couple of screens. So if you are a BSN to MSN to DMP student, these are all the things that you need to turn in. Now, I'm not going to read all of them to you because you all are perfectly capable of reading. But what you need to do is, um, the, again, the slideshow is available to you. This information is on the website in when you apply, it will also give you like a checklist so you can see what's been turned in and graduate programs will email you and let you know if you're missing things off of your application. So um, there are two things, though, I do want to point out that help with students in the application process. So first off, you need a professional goal statement. You'll see that at the bottom there. It's about the third from the bottom. Um, you need a professional goal statement. So make sure you'll see there's five bullet points in that professional goal statement. Make sure you speak to all five of those bullet points. So when you write out a goal statement, the goal statement is given to our faculty with the rubric. Each of those bullet points has points associated with it. So um, if you skip over those, like for example, the last bullet point says describe your research interest. If you just don't talk about your research interest, you lose all the points on that. So don't just turn in a generic goal statement that you have written and turned into another university. Make sure that your goal statement is speaking to all of these. The other thing I recommend is sending it to a friend or a family member to double check, because even though you have read it a thousand times, you might have accidentally missed over a misspelling or it maybe isn't reading the way that you think it's reading um, and maybe it's not as understandable. And so um, you're going to get docked off if you have misspelled words um, or grammatical errors. So make sure that you um, have somebody reread it for you. The other thing that throws students off sometimes is it says you need three letters of recommendation. Three letters of recommendation has three bullet points under there. That does not mean that you need one from each bullet point. It means you need a total of three and it can come from any combination of those three. So you could have two faculty from a recent nursing program and one supervisor or whatever combination. It just has to be one of those three things. It can't just be a letter of recommendation from your mom. It needs to be one of those three categories. So let's talk about um, steps to application for my MSN to DMP students. So again, it's the same application. These are the things you're going to turn in. Again, same scenario as before. Write out that goal statement. Make sure you re speak to each of those bullet points and make sure you have three letters of recommendation in any combination of those three bullet points below. Then we have um, steps to application to the DMP and executive leadership. Same scenario, 
bullet points under the goal statement, you'll see that each one has slightly different um, goal statements <clears throat> that they have to write. So make sure you're speaking and writing to each of those bullet points and those goal statements. Same scenario before. Um, you need to make sure you have three letters of recommendation. The other thing to keep in mind on all of these applications, you will see that this is a clickable link. Um, if you apply, it's going to ask you for your letter of recommendations, email addresses. If you don't have their email address when you go to apply or your people that are supposed to be your recommenders say, I never got anything from the university. You can go to this clickable document Again, it's on our website, it's clickable, and it's clickable in the slideshow. You can go there and get the form and send it to your recommender. Then they fill out the form, attach their letter of recommendation, and they email it or mail it directly to graduate programs. What they can't do is email it to you and then you send it to grad programs because that kind of defeats the purpose because it could just be a goal statement you wrote. So, um, you know, make sure that um, they get that if they didn't get it directly from the university. All right, tuitions and scholarships. So our tuition for graduate programs currently is 803.50. Um, tuition does um, change most years. It's normally every fall semester. It doesn't go up a ton, but it does traditionally go up some. Um, we do offer different scholarship opportunities along with the Nursing Faculty Loan Forgiveness Program. Um, that program, please make sure you click that uh, link and read through it to see if that's something that you're interested in applying for. You cannot apply for that, though, until you've had one semester, some successful semester at the university. So after your first semester classes, then you can apply, but you can go to that link and read um, the detail and more information. Also, please read through our scholarships um, and make sure and see what scholarships you're interested in. The scholarship application opens um, around um, for the specific School of Nursing scholarships, not the university ones, but the School of Nursing ones um, traditionally open around uh, January of every year and close around April of every year. So um, go in and read through those and apply for those specific school of nursing ones, not the university ones during that time. Um, so booking an appointment. So we talked about that earlier. <clears throat> so you can book an appointment with um, an advisor uh, on our website. There is our website if you have additional questions that were not answered during this webinar um, and you want to speak to one of us, you can do a pre-admission appointment. Otherwise, once you're admitted into the program, you'll do a post-admission appointment with Julie. Um, we do offer face-to-face -face appointments in Flint, and then we have phone and virtual appointments also available to you on that website. You'll pick what you would prefer. So pre-admission, again, I'm Brooke. You have Tiffany and Jennifer that you can work with. Um, we can help answer all your pre-admission appointment questions um, about the program. If you have questions about the application, like did you get my letters of recommendation? Have I turned everything in? Make sure you reach out to graduate programs. We in the School of Nursing cannot see your application until it is complete, until everything is turned in. So if you are got questions about the application, work, reach out to graduate programs. But if you have pre-admission questions about the program, we are happy to help those. And then again, um, if you have questions and you and or after you're admitted, you want to book an appointment with Julie to get that course plan set up. And these are our contact informations. So that's the end of our presentation. We want to thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you have additional questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.